And for that, I would like to welcome our keynote speaker, Dave Rhodes, who is a senior vice president at Unity Technologies. Dave has been working with Unity since 2017 and has extensive knowledge and information about how the customer experience is evolving over time, how we are working with it, and a very interesting presentation about how we are going to make selling of complex product in metaverse. I think even just the, the heading makes this very interesting because uh, the, the whole meta and metaverse and not compared to multiverse with Dr. Strange, that's something totally different. But the ideas are the same, right? So we are talking about future. We are talking about how things are evolving. And this presentation will provide a unique perspective on how and why, and especially why the industrial manufacturing are adopting this metaverse uh, into how they can use it as a relevance for the rapidly growing uh, market space. So Dave, very warm welcome to Configit CLM Summit 2022. Really looking forward for your presentation. Stage over to you. Well, good, good. thank you for the great introduction. Uh, good afternoon for those of you in Europe. Uh, good morning uh, here in the US. It's, it's 6.05 in San Francisco this morning. And I've already heard the word metaverse. So uh, it's a good morning to wake up, uh, but I'm, I'm honored to be here. Um, it, uh, as our host said, I'm, I'm Dave Rhodes. I'm the general manager and SVP of our Digital Twins business unit at Unity. For what it's worth, uh, I come with uh, about 30 years of high science software and services in, um, uh, in many spaces, um, particularly manufacturing, construction, uh, high-end industrial machinery and the energy, oil and gas business, et cetera. So thrilled to be here. Um, it's early uh, and I'll do my best to power through this. Uh, and I'm gonna start with a, a couple of questions. Uh, um, this slide is titled the new, new normal, but I don't think this is really normal. I'm gonna ask you a question. How many of you uh, would or have spent tens of thousands of dollars on a product that you've never seen before? It sounds crazy. Uh, our marketing people here called it, call it the new normal. I don't think it's new, uh, but it is normal. Um, the last three or four years have brought technical innovation in the form of, um, high performance, easily accessible via the cloud, GPUs, um, more band, uh, networking bandwidth than, uh, than ever, ever before seen in history, um, uh, practical applications of ML and AI, and then high performance uh, devices at the endpoint at low cost um, for technical innovations. And then put on top of that two and a half years of a pandemic that socially isolated us such that there's a new norm in the way uh, consumers and actually business decision makers uh, make decisions on, uh, on their purchases. So let me build on that a little bit. I'll start in the uh, B2C space just to give you some context. Um, consumer shopping behavior has changed and it'll never go back to the way it was in, in the world when it was only physical in nature. Um, two thirds of the people who purchased a home uh, in America, it's the, that's the largest purchase they, uh, that we possibly make. Uh, two thirds of the people that bought a home in the last year bought that property without ever having physically done a walkthrough um, of the structure. The second largest purchase here in the US, probably in Europe and the, the broader Western world, world uh, is in vehicles, one in five, 20% of people in the last year purchased a vehicle without ever seeing it. Finally, uh, which is, I never thought I would be doing it uh, pre, and didn't until pre-COVID, um, the market for online luxury goods sales, Prada, Louis Vuitton, Cartier, high-end brands, um, their business thrived during COVID, even when all the physical retail stores that are uh, wonderful shopping experiences were completely closed. And that hasn't stopped uh, even after things have opened up. So um, the point here is there is a new normal with respect to consumer shopping behavior. Now, uh, to the point that was made earlier, uh, you all and, and most of my time is spent in B2B 
uh, sales and marketing. And in fact, that's where we're going to go next. But I want to land the first point with you. Um, the B2C shopping behavior has absolutely uh, migrated its way uh, into B2B for a completely set, uh, different set of reasons, but B2B shopping behaviors are also absolutely changing. Now, uh, this is a, a report that McKinsey just did recently. By the way, uh, Truth in Advertising, I'm not a huge McKinsey fan, but they've done some great work lately in really distilling down for executives how to leverage the metaverse, uh, changes in e-commerce um, and how it's how it's impacted the industrial world across multiple subsegments. I'd recommend you you get access to some of that data. In their latest study, seventy percent of B two B decision makers, and of that, another thirty percent are making purchasing decisions completely self serve, completely remote, completely online. Six seven figure. Uh, decisions in the absence of your physical uh, sales and, and product people. They're doing it all online. And so my second question for you, again, early in the morning here, uh, given that behavior that's going on, um, are you doing the, the things that you need to do to accommodate, in fact, get ahead of this new, uh, this new normal in the B2B space? Uh, are are you um, are you leveraging the technology to the extent you ha you can? I challenge you by saying what got you here. You're all successful leaders, and you're you're in this session today because you know what got you here uh, won't get you to the next step. Trade shows, linear videos on a static website, uh, glossies, uh, physical prototypes, and mockups um, are not going to uh, puts you in a position where the competitive advantages of your complex products are well understood. They're personalized and customized for your end clients, um, and and can be can be delivered on time, on quality, um, and on availability. So the world has changed in B and B B two B, and those of you who don't adapt are going to get left behind. Having a little problem with the clicker this morning, but I'm I'm okay so far. So bear with me. Um, now, a lot of companies that we work with uh, at Unity and with our uh, strategic partner, Configit, uh, Config are, um, are innovating. They took advantage of the last couple of years to retool. They took advantage uh, of situations where it was an even playing field, uh, small, small companies, small manufacturers, up to large manufacturers, um, and, and they're innovating, and they're driving change, and they're uh, getting results. We uh, over the last year, uh, commissioned a study with Forrester to look at uh, pan pandemic-driven adoption of immersive technology in industrial use cases because we wanted to understand um, what were companies doing um, since they couldn't go out with their with their sales force and physically see people on the shop floor. Uh, and uh, it's clear that adoption of these technologies. Um, absolutely accelerated uh, in, in a matter of a few short months. The significant outcomes of the study were this, and you can read them on the slide. 60% of the manufacturers that we surveyed used the pandemic and these really four technology trends I described to, um, to retool, to focus on technical innovation. And in fact, the, the surprising thing to me, quite honestly, is in all the areas that I would have expected them to invest, workforce training, uh, material resource planning, getting their supply chain uh, prepared for, uh, you know, maybe supply issues of subcomponents and things like that. The number one area, 80% of those that responded invested in digital marketing and e-commerce transactional experiences. Think about that for a minute. Of anywhere that these companies could have done tech innovation, robotics, AI, uh, clean manufacturing, all the places they could have invested, the place that they invested was digital marketing and e-commerce. Pretty phenomenal. Why is that? Um, two reasons. Number one, a shift in these buy, buying behaviors that I described, this increased willingness to research, execute, evaluate, experience high value purchases 
uh, solely online. And then a second driver is the availability of new tools to digitize your sales and marketing workflow in a way where the experiences are personalized, they run in real time, and when I say real time, 60 to 120 frames a second on all kinds of different platforms. Um, products like the Configit uh, Ace uh, capability enable uh, you to make sure that your customer uh, can't configure a product that cannot be built, uh, which is a, it's, is a huge issue. So the second issue is, or the second driver here is this opportunity to leverage technology in a way um, that in fact is better than a physical experience. Uh, it doesn't mean you don't need salespeople, but it means you have a very personalized, real-time, hyper-realistic, um, and well-planned out um, sales, sales workflow uh, that drives conversion rates, it drives stickiness, um, and in fact, it, it builds some, some after effects as well. So given this, uh, maybe this is the third question in the morning. Again, I need more coffee, but how are you going to ensure this connection, you leverage this technology uh, in a way where you can have a connection between your brand and your product superiority and the intangible capabilities of your products to your end buyer if you can't touch them anymore. Now I'll talk about the metaverse. That's how you do it. And uh, uh, the answer is obvious. Everybody just needs to go to the metaverse, right? Um, hey team, if you could, I don't know how to do it, but if you can roll the videos for me uh, and just keep them rolling uh, while I'm talking here. Um, here's the good news. Uh, group. Whoops. What happened here? Go back. I'm not sure what's going on there. Just roll the three videos that are in, within uh, these three product experiences he here. They're, they should be YouTubes. Um, at any rate, I'll keep going. Um, the good news is I'm not going to babble at you about what the metaverse is. We all have a def definition, and I can assure you we are all wrong. We all uh, have a, um, we do not have a good understanding of how the metaverse will manifest itself. What I do know, please go back to the last slide. What I do know is that the uh, elements of the metaverse are in front of us and they've been here for quite some time. The metaverse uh, is the next ev evolution of the internet in a way where ultimately everything that's 2D, everything that is static is real time. It's 3D, it's immersive, it's hyper photorealistic, um, and it runs in real time. Um, the second element of the metaverse uh, is that it is, instead of uh, an isolated one uh, singular experience, it uh, creates an environment where uh, it's multiplayer, if you will. It's uh, multiple people interacting with the product in a way where uh, they can communicate uh, digitally and see the, the uh, capabilities of the product. This, this isn't the... This isn't the video that I wanted to show. If we could just go back to the slide, that would be great. Uh, but you can see a, a, a great example of a, a product configurator there uh, running in real time. Um, so the this, this, this second idea is that it's interactive. You can change uh, the colors. You can change your scene. Um, you can essentially do everything at scale to understand the capabilities of your of your product and the related services, and then finally, as I said earlier, instead of isolated in a single singular experience, you're engaged. You're interacting with the product again in real time in a physically accurate way, where the digital twins that you're you've essentially implemented um, in this metaverse or, or digital experience um, behave, uh, look. Uh, operate identically, identically to the physical counterparts um, that that can, in fact, be manufactured. So we'll move on. Um, love to make those videos available to you. My email is dave at unity3d.com. You can always uh, send uh, a note directly to me. Now, let's talk about a, a very specific uh, joint customer that we have here. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about how they've leveraged this technology. So here's an example of uh, a customer, some of you might recognize the logo uh, on there, who's already 
uh, reaping the benefits of adopting this uh, metaverse technology. I got to stop using that. Real-time 3D um, configure, configuration capability in virtual showrooms um, and, and, and put it into their... Um, put it into their sales and marketing pipeline. I'm going to go backwards here. Um, again, let's see if we can roll the videos, if we can, please, from within the slides. Do your best. Um, this customer is one of the top manufacturers for the woodworking machinery industry. And when the pandemic hit, um, one of their major sources of leads, trade shows and exhibitions, were completely shut down. Of course, you can imagine that. Uh, and of course, their lead lead flow went to zero. I, I, uh, yeah, I know you understand that all too keenly. Our customer swiftly teamed up with the local design agency, an agency partner, to create a real-time sales and marketing web experience, allowing them to continue to engage thousands of pro, uh, prospects and customers from anywhere in the world and showcase their products and capabilities. Now, what you see here is a virtual showroom that lets anyone explore the interactive 3D space from within their browser. Visitors can explore 35 individual machines, including experimenting with different configurations, um, tuning, the, tuning and modeling the performance. Uh, buyers can understand and experiment in real time physically uh, whether these machines will fit in a, a, a factory floor in a certain space and, and how materials flow through, height adjustments, et cetera, all within limits of what is physically possible for that machine, the physical world. Um, again, I want to reemphasize this last point. Customers only select a configuration that can actually be delivered uh, and uh, in reality and 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 that perform um, as configured. This is a really important issue that all of us, I think, have had in the industrial machinery and durable goods business um, in that oftentimes, uh, because we haven't built our configurator right, uh, our customer comes up with something that's very novel, but it's something that we can't manufacture and deliver. And um, the Unity uh, tool chain along with Configit ensures that um, through ACE, those configurations are precise, they're error-free, and the physical assets perform um, as expected. Now, the buyer's experience in this particular case doesn't stop with sales and marketing. What this manufacturer has used the virtual showroom to do is also continue to maintain a digital relationship with the client. Uh, service and support is all managed through the virtual showroom. Uh, training videos and webinars on um, how to leverage your products for uh, efficiency and effectiveness uh, for safety um, are available and, and in the showroom. Um, and in fact, they have also been able to make sure that this experience is actually connected and personalized in a way where I, as a technician, for example, can come in, get trained on the product, can experiment with it, and um, the data that's collected um, is enabling um, this company's product management team, their merchandising um, expert, ex experts, um, their human factors folks to actually understand in real time how people are interacting with the digital model in a way that they could never do before uh, in a scalable way. So this personalized, um, real-time data experience that's coming back um, and informing the product strategy is highly valuable and, again, differentiated from the physical experiences uh, that we used to get by going out to the shop floor and uh, in, a, in a random sample uh, talking to uh, people using our products. Um, now, the good news for your engineering counterparts is you've all been investing in, in 3D engineering and modeling solutions for years. Uh, there's not a large lift to go from where you are today to begin to deploy uh, these digital experiences. And I'm running out of time, so I need to hurry. Um, but you can build an interactive 3D configurator with the basic uh, data, the underlying engineering and product data that you have today, and it's not a huge lift. Now, um, in this particular case, uh, the moral of the story with this particular customer um, is that they drove an 80% cost reduction um, 
and using the 3D data for numerous use cases. In other words, not having to create a digital model for engineering, another one for manufacturing, another one for go to market. They use the same 3D data set um, and a modest investment with an agency, with Unity, with Configit, with some surrounding um, CRM tools, um, ultimately to build a wonderful 3D real-time digital experience uh, that differentiates them in, in the industry that they're in. And then 75% reduction um, in uh, the, the media and materials that they had to produce to go get out uh, into market. So like I said, don't, don't take my word for it. Um, people are moving, they're moving quickly. If you're not moving already, you're falling behind. Now, um, here's the, here's the punchline in my last couple of minutes available here. Um, digital transformation is happening across the entire life cycle. These real time experiences that I've been talking to you about this morning relative to sales and marketing are working backwards in the design and the supply chain in a way where uh, again, uh, you can start anywhere, but having a real-time 3D uh, digital workflow across multiple platforms is paying off dividends relative to uh, product uh, design cycle time. Again, design for manufacturability. Uh, it's making its way onto the onto the production line in a way where uh, workers are building higher quality products uh, more safely uh, than they ever have. And again, it's all connected. Uh, out to your end customers in that you're getting telemetry and, in, and, and information uh, back in real time that's helping you make uh, better decisions on uh, what you're building to, to, get, uh, to get good product fit. And you probably heard a lot about that yesterday um, in, the, um, in, the engineering, uh, in, the, in the engineering track that, that uh, the team had. Um, Config at ACE and the capabilities around this right the first time uh, product configuration um, is also enabling um, configure to order uh, at, at massive scale at large uh, in large complex industrial machinery companies because again uh, you no longer have to build a physical prototype uh, you no longer are providing configuration options to customers that ultimately uh, can't be built. Um, and because it's running in real time, you're able to manage a supply chain in a way where a pricing, uh, availability, um, time to, to produce and, and get running in production uh, on the shop floor is much more predictable than it ever has been. Uh, okay, um, I'll bring us home. Now, uh, this sounds like a lot. This is a lot. This is a big quote here. Um, Matt uh, Fleckenstein uh, at Microsoft, um, a lot, doing a lot in the area of metaverse in both B2B, B2C. Um, we're not trying to boil the ocean here. I want you to walk away not feeling overwhelmed that to get in the real-time uh, 3D configuration to order space is a, a massive lift for you. It's not. Uh, it's very simple. You, the data that you have already is what you, uh, what you start with. Um, get that data clean, get it in one place, uh, get it in something like Unity where it's out of its proprietary workflow or, or proprietary uh, design tools and, and into a Switzerland, if you will. Uh, free your data. It's your data, uh, not DeSos. Um, and then start with a pilot, whether it's a, um, a large teacher customer that a, you're, a, you're a strategic supplier to, or it's a, a, ca a subset of your overall product catalog, a small number of SKUs. That are configurable, and you you want to test out uh, test out the lift and the the uh, uh, customer engagement with these products. Um, start small and measure, create measurements for a hard ROI. Whether it's um, cycle time uh, in terms of your sales process, whether it's the amount of money you're send, uh, spending on traditional marketing materials. Um, whether it is uh, product flexibility in some way, shape, or form, whatever it might be, get the hard ROI measurements identified and make sure you're measuring along the way. I'm highly confident that you'll see lift. You'll see a, a much more loyal customer experience. You'll learn more about what's going on in your markets um, than you, you uh, had uh, prior to, to COVID. 
and certainly during COVID. And um, you'll be an innovator. You'll be uh, an, an innovator in the eyes of your customers, and it'll create competitive advantage for you. So that's all from me this morning. Um, again, thanks to the Configit team for having me, uh, having me here and uh, looking forward to uh, working with all of you in the near future. Thanks.